Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over how to enter and exit a car. Now I'm going to be using the third person template and also the vehicle template provided by Unreal to use their cars as well so that's what I'm going to be going over and this is kind of just a basic version. What we're going to do is just get in the car, drive it around and be able to get out but you won't see the player sat in the car. So I did a video like this a couple months ago however it wasn't really that good so I'm going to be improving upon it today and this one is a lot lot better. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you see we have our player here, we can walk around, do anything you'd normally want to, so if this is a battle rail, you'd be able to shoot and all that, and you can get in the car by going up to it, pressing E, and we can now drive around controlling the car, do whatever we want in here, and if we stop it, get out, we can then obviously get out the player, get out the car to the player, sorry, and then control the player as normal, and if I had to press E over here, nothing happens, you have to be near the car to press E to get in, press E to get back out, like so. So this is what we're going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create something called a blueprint interface. And this is just going to allow us to communicate between different blueprints in a nice and efficient manner. So I do have other videos going over these properly and in more detail if you want to learn more about blueprint interfaces. And if so, I'll leave a link in the description down below and on the screen now. But let's create it. So to do that, we're going to right click, go to blueprints and create a blueprint interface. I'm going to name this one interact interface and as I'm naming it interact interface we can actually use this wherever we want in order to interact with any item again you'll understand that more in the video that I've made separately and we're going to open this up here as this is a read only function all we need to do is just change the name of this function to be interact as that makes sense for me and we also want to add an input on here named interactor or player or player interacting whatever makes sense for you but interactor makes sense for me because the player that is interacting is going to be this variable here and we want to change this variable type from a boolean to a character object reference like so we'll compile save and that's all we need to do inside of the blueprint interface they are very very easy to use in setup and also really efficient i definitely recommend using these especially instead of casting all the time so we're going to close that and now we're going to open up our player blueprint so the player can interact with the car to get into it so we're going to go to the third person BP, blueprints, third person character, or whatever it is named for you. In here, I'm going to go to edit on the top left, project settings, go down to input, and here I'm just going to create an action wrapping for my interact. So you can press the plus arrow there, and this one I'm just going to name interact. This again, this is a nice easy way of creating action wrappings or buttons to press. So this means you can set up key bindings and also multiple buttons, as well as buttons for different platforms, i.e. PC and console and stuff like that. So mine is just going to be the E key, however this can be whatever you want, for example E, F, left mouse button, anything you like. And I'm going to close this, right click on my event graph and search what we named it, and I named mine interact, making sure it's the interact action event, not anything else. Like so, so now whenever we press E, or whatever button you set it up as, this will fire off. And what we want to do here, is we want to interact obviously, so we want to use the interact interface we just created. So to do this, what I'm going to do is right click and get overlapping actors. So this is just going to get all of the actors which we are currently standing on or overlapping. And out of this, we're going to get a for each loop with break. So we're going to go through the array of all the different actors, but only find one which we want to interact with. And to find the one we want to interact with, we want to come out of array element and do does implement interface. So if it implements our interact interface, we want to try and interact with it. If it doesn't, we're going to go on to the next one. And obviously the interface here, we're just going to type in interact interface like so. Then as this is returning a boolean value, we want a branch. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting the condition into there. And this is going to go into the loop body like so. So again, every time we're checking an overlapping actor, it's going to do this loop body, which is just checking to see if it implements our interact interface. If it doesn't, we're not going to do anything, which will then go to the next one in the loop. And if it's true, so it does, what we're going to do is drag out of the array element once again, and then we're going to do interact, or whatever you named the function inside of your interact interface. So you see here I have interact interface, interact in brackets message there. So I'm going to click that, and you'll see we now also have our input of interactor there. The interactor input, I'm just going to get a reference to self, as the interactor is a current player here, i.e. our third person character or the player. And out of this, we're also going to go all the way back into break of the for each loop. 
So what's going to happen is it's going to then stop looking through the items. As we found something we want to interact with, we no longer want to be searching for something else unless we obviously press E once again. I'm just going to double click these to get some root nodes to keep it looking nice and organized. And that is all we need to do in the player blueprint, because this is going to now allow us to interact with the car. Obviously we need to set up the interact button in the car as well, however once we do that this will now work perfectly. So we're going to compile, save and close that, now we need to open our car. Which I should also mention if you don't have the car in here, so like I say I'm using the Unreal project for it, what you do is add new, add feature or content pack, click on vehicle and then add to project. You can use vehicle advanced if you want as well, however I'm just using vehicle here. So once you've done that, you can then open Vehicle BP, Sedan, and open the Sedan blueprint here. Don't worry about that issue, that's just because I deleted the code a second ago when I was showing you what I've done. So in here, we're going to go to the viewport, zoom out a little bit, and you'll see that we can't actually overlap this at the moment. So you'll notice in our interacting code, we have to be overlapping the actor. We can't do that yet in here. So very simply, what I'm going to do is add a component and add a box collision like so and scale this up to the size I want it to be. So again the player has to be inside of this box collision in order to interact with the car and get inside of it. So make that however big you want but I think for me that's going to be good so if the player is within this radius of the box collision they're going to be able to interact with the car. Compile and save that. One other thing I'm going to do in the viewport is add another component and I'm going to add a skeletal mesh. Adding that there like so. I'm going to change the mesh to be my mannequin and I'm going to put that to the side of the door here and what this is going to do is this is going to act as an object reference so wherever we want to spawn the player when they get out of the car that is going to be here so I'm just putting it on this side as that's where the driver's seat is actually no it's not this is an American car so it's a left hand drive so it'll be on this side but obviously it doesn't matter too much just put it where you want the player to get out of the car now I've also just had a thought what you could do is get another one of these and put it in the driver's seat so if you have a driving or sitting down animation you can obviously just put that there so you could just use animation asset and then put in an animation here so obviously I don't have one but let's just put walk for example obviously you want it to be sitting and driving so you could put it there which would then allow you to actually have the player sat inside the car while you're driving about as well which would look nice so obviously do that if you want I'm not going to as I've only just thought of it and I don't have the animations for it but do make sure you have the skeleton mesh on the outside as a reference to where you want the player to spawn. So we'll compile, save that, and go to the event graph and actually start setting up some of the code now. And so the code for this is going to be off of the interact interface which we created earlier. So we need to implement that into this blueprint. And that's nice and simple as well. What we can do is go up to the class settings at the top here and under interfaces we're going to add and we're going to add our interact interface like so. Compile and save that and you see on the left we have an interact tab here or interfaces sorry open that up and we have our interact as that is the name of the function we created if you right click on it you can implement function and now we have this function here which we can do all of our code off so what happens is now in our character blueprint let me open that up here when we call this interact message here it's going to fire off this event function here so that's a basic version of how interfaces work when this fires off, this is called. So I hope that makes sense. So out of this, what we want to do is, again, this is a basic version. So I want to hide the player, disable the player's collision so you can't accidentally run them over, and then we want to possess the car. So we're now driving the car and controlling the car instead of the player. So that is all very simple. We can drag out of interactor, as that is again a reference to our player, and set actor hidden in game. I'm going to tick new hidden so the player is hidden. Drag out of interactor again and set actor enable collision and we're going to leave it false so unticked so they have no collision. And then we're going to right click get player controller out of this we're going to get a possess node just felt like that with the target being get player controller and the in pawn is going to be get a reference to self. So we are now controlling this car, so this blueprint, which is the car, using the player controller. So the player controller will control the car. So I hope that makes sense. So now what's going to happen is when we go up to the car, we are actually now going to start driving the car if we press E. So let's just test that one out. If I go up to it, press E, we're now driving the car. Obviously I forgot to hide the mannequins, so we'll do that in a second. But you'll notice we can't also get out because we haven't set that up yet. 
So let's do that now. Also, while I remember, select the skeletal mesh, scroll down and tick hidden in game, which means we won't see it in game anymore. If we press play, you'll see it's no longer there. So now, again, let's set up the code for exiting the car. So we're going to right click, get our interact button. It's again, if we press E to get in, we want to press E to get out. Again, making sure it's interact event of the action event. Sorry, there's so many different interact buttons here. So interact, and we want the action event interact there. So make sure you get the correct one. What we want to do is we want to move the player's location to be where our reference is of this skeletal mesh here. Make sure we can see them again, make sure they have collision again, and make sure we're controlling the player, not the car. So that's four different nodes. So what we're going to do is get a reference to our skeletal mesh, drag out of this and get world location. So again, this is now going to be the location of where we want to spawn the player. So to actually spawn the player, what we're going to do is drag out of the interactor on the event interact here and set actor location. Just like this, put into pressed of the input action interact, a new location being our get world location. Now what you can do is you can right click on the interactor, promote it to a variable once you've interacted here, just to keep it looking a bit more organized. So you have that as a variable to put it down here instead. However, I'm not gonna to bother too much. What I might do though is double click this, get a root node, so I can then come out of this one instead. So now we want to make sure we can see the player again. So we're gonna drag out of our interactor once again and set actor hidden in game. This time we're going to leave it false, so it is not hidden. And then we're going to again set actor enable collision. So what we can actually do is just copy these nodes here. So set actor enable collision, possess, get play controller, control C, control V down here. Again, making sure we connect the targets up. So target is going to be our interactor there. And the possess, the in pawn is also going to be our interactor, so our player, like so. And that should now be the code done for us. So we can compile, save. I've already showed you this bit working, we're getting in the car. And this part is now getting out of the car. So when we leave the car by pressing E, what we're going to do is move the player's location to be this skeletal mesh reference we have here. So it's going to be outside of the car door. Make sure we can see the player again, so new hidden is false. Make sure the player has collision again, so we need to tick that one actually, new actor enable collision ticked, so we have collision, and then possess the player once again, so we're controlling the player, not the car. So let's hit play and test this out. Pressing E over here does absolutely nothing, we control our player as normal, go up to the car, press E, we've got in the car, we're now possessing it, we're controlling the car, so I'm driving that bit around, if I were to stop it, press E, we now got out on the driver's side, press E, nothing happens because I'm away from the car, and we're controlling the player like normal once again. So that works perfectly, so I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do, what we've done is set it up so we have a player which we can control like normal, go up to a car, press E to get into the car, we can now drive about however we want and, and do whatever we want, we can press E to get back out again and it will put it to the side of the car like this, making sure we can now control our player as per usual. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.